This year, and by the time you've watched this video, I will have celebrated my 30th birthday. And the past decade has been um, a decade full of learning, full of life lessons. And to think about where I started the decade in my early 20s, and to where I'm finishing it now as I go into my 30s, I feel like I've got so much information, so much knowledge, that I wanted to share with you the biggest life lessons that I've taken away over the past 10 years. These are lessons about personal finance, attitude to life, and other things in general that I just think will give you a better quality of life. So with that said, let's go right into it. If you're new here, my name's Johnny. I'm originally from the UK, but I've been living and working in Madrid for the past four and a half years. And on my channel, I talk a lot of things, personal finance, travel, life abroad, especially in Spain, where I'm living now. And yeah, a lot of the lessons that I'm about to share in this video have inspired a lot of my content, a lot of how this channel came to be what it is. So yeah, well, that said, let's get right into it. Before we do, actually, I'm on like another kind of countryside walk. I'm at this like little village, not too far from where I live, um, where there's you no know, nice green space, trees, I'm walking around. There's a very nice view as well in the end where you can see all over kind of the eastern part of Madrid. Um, you can even see planes as well from the airport. So I'll be sure to show you that. All right, so the first lesson I want to talk about, which is probably no surprise given what the channel's called, Millennials of Money, is about money. It's about the value of money and what I've learned the value of money to be. Um, over the past 10 years or so. Now talk about the value of money, there's multiple perspectives to look at this. There's obviously what money is, it's a resource, it's a tool that you can use um, and it's valuable in the sense that you know you can use it to build wealth, buy freedom and at the same time there's also the lesson of you know the value of money in time perspective like if I work for an hour and I earn 20 euros in that hour for example if I then go and buy a hundred euro item, then that costs me five hours of my time. So that's one way to look at it as well. And so understanding like the value of money in terms of time, in terms of what it can really do, it's made me be much more careful about the decisions I make with my money. Like, do I really want to have spent, I don't know, five hours of my time to purchase this 100 euro item? Or would those five hours be better spent putting it in something else, like investing it or saving it? or making a better purchase that'll last me more more time, etc. all these kind of things. And recently, like in the past couple of years, as I've kind of made the pivot towards more travel and living abroad content on YouTube as well, I've seen, you know, how money just opens doors for people in terms of getting like, you know, the opportunity to move abroad, to live abroad in a foreign country, like they have the financial resources to support themselves, to be eligible for certain kinds of visas, um, it, you know, with more money you can access investment opportunities that you might not be able to if you had less money like you know property all these kinds of things so yeah big lesson from the decade is obviously what money is how it's valuable and knowing that being able to make more smart decisions with my finances as a result the other money lesson i've learned from the decade is like financial mistakes happen you know as much as i can talk about making smart financial decisions and doing the right thing with your money from time to time even the people that know the most um you know not saying i know everything about finance but i consider myself fairly financially literate but still i've made financial mistakes um and they happen to me just like they happen to everyone else so the lesson I've learned there is that no one is immune to making financial mistakes. They happen. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just accept it and move on. Because, you know, because whilst it's not an excuse to give yourself a free pass on making a financial mistake, money can be earned back. And, you know, nine times out of ten, you can recover from a financial mistake. So, yeah, just take the learning. Know what it is that you did wrong. Think about how you'd act differently if you're faced with the same dilemma the next time. Take the learning and move on. You'll recover financially and you'll be fine. All right, next lesson is a bit more general and it's about persistence. And it's in the past few years that I've really realized like how important persistence is as an ingredient to success. When I started this YouTube channel in 2020, you know, I had less than 100 subscribers at the end after four months. At the end of 2021, I had 1,000 subscribers. The end of 2022, I think I had 2,000 maybe or 3,000. Just no, 2,000. At the end of 2023, I had just over 3,000. And then now in kind of the fourth quarter of 2024, let's say I'm approaching 9,000 subscribers. Now that might not seem like much time and it might seem like a pretty quick growth journey, which in a lot of respects it is given, you know, what some people go through and, you know, never break a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So of course I'm, I'm really happy with that, but what a lot of people have not seen behind that is, you know, the late nights that have been spent editing videos, thinking like, 
is this really worth it? Like, is this video gonna actually do anything? The constant grind to come up with video ideas, to refine them, to get them in a format that works for everyone, and to put them out every single week, hoping that it will bring growth to the YouTube channel, is very tough. You know, when you're not seeing that growth, when you've been stagnant for a month, a couple of months on YouTube, and you're trying to move forward, it's, it's then when you need persistence. Like, just being able to keep turning up, keep sh putting yourself out there, keep showing yourself. Eventually, you give yourself the best chance of breaking through. You know, it's not a guaranteed formula for success, but you're giving yourself the very best chance if you just stick at it, just keep getting better, just keep doing what you're doing. Eventually, people will notice. Eventually, people will start to appreciate the work you do. And eventually, you know, you'll reap the hard work that you've been putting in. Honestly, I'd be lying to you if I'd said that, like, I'd never once thought about, you know, just stop making YouTube videos and just live a normal life. It's it, like, there's other things in life I've given up on, like, I started making music at one point, you know, I did music for a few years and then decided to give up. I played basketball competitively for years and years, stopped, got back into it, and then stopped again. And I was like, maybe not amazing, I was fairly good at a lot of those things. I uh, definitely had the potential to do more, but I never stuck with them. And so, eventually, you know, it kind of, the, the journey came to an end, essentially. The things I really stuck at it, like learning languages, like French and Spanish, um, because I lived abroad. That's the next lesson that we're going to talk about actually after this. And, you know, just sticking with making YouTube videos are the things where it's finally paid off. Like, the hard work was there, the tough times were there, the wanting to quit at times were there. But because I stuck with it, and because I kept going, you know, you might not see results for years. A lot of, you know, people want quick success, people expect results fast. That's not how it works. It takes time. It takes time to perfect your craft, to know actually what you're doing. Like half the time we might be out here just trying to do something. We don't have a freaking clue like what we're doing. But it's going through that process. Um, it's going through that process, persisting, learning, getting better one step at a time. That will get you to where you need to be. And related to that as well, it's like, just, just do something. Like, you might not know what you're doing. Just do it. Someone who comes up with an idea for a YouTube channel, for example. Let's take the YouTube channel example. Someone who comes up with an idea for a channel. Someone who decides when they're going to upload videos. They have an entire concept for the channel. They have an idea of how they want it to be branded, but never actually makes a video. The person who just gets out their phone, records a video, uploads it to YouTube. You know, no branding, no th real thought into the process has done more than that person who's um, who's planned out everything. I have ideas for stuff like all the time, like business ideas and everything. Um, I'm gonna take the example of like some of the digital products that are on my website. Like I had some of these ideas for a while and I thought, yeah, you know, I'm a bit busy at the moment. I'm gonna push it back for another couple of months or so, or I'm not really sure how I'd do this, how I'd build this file or how I'd approach this. Um, so they kept getting pushed back and it was the day that I just opened an Excel worksheet, started playing around with some cells, coming up with calculations, that things actually came together. Now that's not to say don't just launch into something willy-nilly and not give it any thought or something. The point is, taking action is doing more than just planning. The two need to come together for it to work really well and to function, but, you know, action is the most important step. Now guys, I promised you a look at the views, so here they are. So this is the view. So this is the view as you can see. This is all over the east of Madrid. It's a really nice view. The mountains in the back there, that's the Sierra Madrid. Um, really, really nice. You know, in the winter you can see the snow and everything. Yeah, looking from right to left. So over there is Alcalá de Henares, one of the towns out here in the, the east of Madrid. If you go further east that way, that's my finger, yeah, further east, then you eventually arrive in Castilla-La Mancha and the towns of Guadalajara. And over here to the left, you have Torrejón de Ardoz, kind of starting here and goes a little bit behind this, this mountain on the left there. And then, you know, further on, just uh, behind the mountain, you've got like Barajas Airport, like the Madrid Airport. Right now, I think the air traffic must be kind of on the approach from this side, so like the planes would come in this way. Um, but yeah, when they take off, when the traffic is um, leaving the airport like southbound, the planes, they'll do like a loop around before they head on to their destination. And so the next lessons I'm gonna talk about relate to my journey abroad, which is hands down like to date, 
like one of the things I'm most uh, proud of that I'm most happy with is one of the best things I've done in my life giving myself the opportunity to move and live abroad this is the first time you're watching a video by me and you don't know much about me so as I said I'm living in Madrid now um, I've also lived in Barcelona in Spain I lived in three different cities in France as well and I've lived in a couple of places around the UK which is where I'm originally from honestly like if you have the chance to move abroad have any kind of experience abroad whether it's for a couple of weeks a month three months a year whatever it is if you get the opportunity like 100% go for it moving abroad will enrich your life in ways that you can't even imagine exposure to a new culture the opportunity to meet new people the opportunity to live new experiences see things that you wouldn't have otherwise had the chance to experience back in your home country. It's not always easy. There's obviously challenges that come with living abroad, like, you know, sometimes the language, sometimes different ways of doing things. Um, time difference, if you've got family in a, in a different continent, you know, that can be difficult to stay in touch with them. I haven't personally had to deal with that one, but you know, some people might. But the memories, the experiences that you can have living abroad, priceless, absolutely priceless. There's nothing that comes close. I can tell you in my own words, but there's really no substitute for like just going abroad and trying it yourself like absolutely if you get the chance say yes basically because and i think this is another lesson uh, the regret of not doing something can often be greater than the regret of doing something and it not quite being what you expect it to be let's take the travel abroad example like i went and studied abroad in france amazing i uh, really loved it and now you know i'm pretty much living outside the uk um, i haven't lived in the uk now for like six years but what if that study abroad experience that first study abroad experience in france uh, hadn't been quite what i expected to be well it was three months you know i was young no responsibilities nothing lost really you know gave it would have given it a try wouldn't have worked out you know move on with life kind of thing that's the absolute worst that can happen you know in the majority of cases when you try something new it's not an irreversible decision. It's not something that you do it and then you can't go back to, you know, how life was before. So, you know, you really have nothing to lose, you know, in these situations. Just give it a go and, and see how it goes. All right, the next lesson is something that I really only started applying like past year, past two years or something. And that's to just stop caring about so much stuff in life. Like there's so many situations that I think we can get worked up about, we can get stressed about. Maybe something happened at work that isn't quite how we'd like it to be. Maybe, you know, we're trying to organize an event, we're trying to organize travel or something like that, and we're getting really stressed and worked up about it. Maybe you're worried about what fam maybe you're worried about what friends, family, other people will think if you do something in life. Seriously, just don't worry about it. From personal reflection, I'd say there's like three out of push four areas that really really do matter in life and i'd say that's like family friends relationships that kind of thing your health like physical mental health and then to a lesser extent ironically despite it being you know the topic of a lot of what i talk about like money and finance family and friends are some of the most important people in our lives you know they're the people that we do the most for we give the most of our effort our the, our best for and they're the ones who you know give us the same in return our physical and mental well-being i think it goes without saying you know if we want to live life to the max and enjoy it then we obviously need to prioritize that and then money you know has importance like i think you can you know if you set yourself up well financially as i talk about in this vlog and on other videos then you can alleviate a lot of problems and a lot of stress in your life um that said you know if you you know not being a millionaire not having multiple properties or a six-figure investment portfolio doesn't make you any less of a person it doesn't make you less valuable it doesn't make you a failure in life is what i'm trying to say as long as you're in a comfortable secure financial situation then that's then that's good but yeah a lot of things outside of that we can easily get stressed and worked up about and in reality they're just things that aren't worth worrying about like if you look back on the thing you're worrying about in five years like are you really going to feel the same as you feel today if something's not going to have a significant impact on your life for multiple years and even decades ahead then you know don't worry about it too much like don't worry about what other people say put your own well-being and the interests of your friends and family um, if applicable first and just make your decisions based on that and if anyone wants to explore any of that in no detail then i can definitely recommend the book the subtle art of not giving up by mark manson he talks about how we have a limited number of to give in life um and that you know we should use them wisely we should 
care, let's say we'll, we'll care about the things that are really important and we shouldn't waste our energy, our energy, yeah, you know, we shouldn't waste our energy, our strength, caring about things that aren't really important. And the last lesson I want to share is a hard truth. It's a hard truth to swallow, um, but it's a necessary truth that you need to accept because without this, you'll not be able to move forward in life. And it's that it might not be your fault that you're in the situation you're in. You know, there's a lot going on in the world. We're living in what seems to be very unstable, unsettling, uncertain times. And that can impact us directly or indirectly. But what happens next, like the action or inaction um, that will then determine my future is on me. If I don't like something, if I want something in life, there might be legitimate obstacles, there might be difficulties to me getting what I want in life. But if I really want something, if I really want to achieve something or get somewhere in life, then, you know, I can't be complaining about the obstacles that are in my way. I can't be complaining about the challenges. It's up to me to find a way to overcome those obstacles, to overcome those challenges. The fact that I now live abroad permanently outside the UK, that was my choice. It wasn't easy, you know, there's a lot of obstacles moving from the UK um, overseas, especially now, less so back in my time, but still, you had the challenge of, you know, you know, you're moving to a foreign country, you're not necessarily native in the language that you're speaking, you need to find employment, you need to find a way to survive there, basically, and to have a good life. But instead of thinking to myself, oh, I can't really do that, you know, oh, I'm not qualified, oh, I can't speak French or Spanish good enough, put my head down, I studied those languages really hard, learned them to the best of my ability, researched what it would be that I need to do to get me closer to moving abroad, whether it's, you know, studying abroad, doing a master's abroad, whether it's getting an internship in a foreign country, whether it's, you know, making friends, contacts, professional networking in another country. In my case, I'm happy to say it worked out. Let's say you want to start investing money, but you know, like things are tight, you've got a lot of expenses and your income barely covers that. It's a tough situation to be in, but like if you really want to get started investing, you got to find a way to either reduce your expenses somehow, you know, maybe there's one or two things that you can cut back on, or find a way to bring in more money, like whether it's starting a side hustle, so that extra money you can then contribute that to an investing account, for example. And it might be that you want to learn a foreign language, like have you thought about investing in a tutor to help you with that language? What materials are you looking at to help you? Like, are you giving yourself exposure to media, to content in that language, like movies, TV, books, um, music? For example, it's a famous basketball player called Kevin Durant who said a quote one time which is hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard. And I think that we can apply some of that quote to this lesson that I'm saying. You might not be the best at something. You might not be in the, the easiest of circumstances. Things might be tough, but if you want it, you'll find a way to make it happen. If that is you, just know that I believe in you and I wish you all the best. And honestly, if you just want some support, if you want me to give you some encouragement, just drop an email, drop a comment or something and I'm, I'm happy to, you know, give you some, some support, however I can. So guys, there you have it, my top lessons from my 20s that have helped me as I approach my 30s. It's been, honestly, an incredible decade, as I say, full of amazing experiences, um, I could never have imagined the life that I have today, like when I was 20 years old, but I'm so grateful for everything I have. I'm so grateful for every one of you as well that watches the videos, that supports the channel. Um, and you know, I said it's hard to make videos sometimes, it's hard to grow a YouTube channel. But every time one of you watches the video and finds something helpful and is able to take a step towards making your dream of you know, building wealth, moving abroad, whatever it is, come true, then for me, that's what it's all about. And honestly, when that happens, it's a win-win. It's a win for you, it's a win for me, and I'm so, so grateful. So it's sunset in about 40 minutes or so, so I'm gonna, you know, chill up here, enjoy the sun, put some music on and enjoy that probably. Um, but yeah, guys, leave a comment and let me know um, if you've been through your 20s uh, as well, what were the big lessons you learned? If you relate to any of the lessons that I shared in this video as well, then I'd love to hear your thoughts, your experiences as well. And who knows, maybe in 10 years, I'll be making another video talking about the lessons I've learned in my 30s as I approach my 40s. So yeah, until next time, I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money.